Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how to install a receiver hitch on your uh, first gen Toyota Tacoma. Uh, first gen, I don't know what year it is, late 90s to early thousands, this is a 2001. And I've got a Kurt hitch, I believe this is a class 3, 5,000 pound maximum. Pretty nice, nice hitch, really sturdy looking. Nice welds, nice paint. And it's pretty straightforward instructions for how to install it. Everything you need is here. This I bought. These, this is the hardware that comes with the kit, and then here's the instructions. All right, don't make the mistake I almost made and uh, torch cut those bolts off because I thought it was a bolt on one side with a nut on the other. But the nut apparently is well done to the frame. So just a little bit of oil, maybe a little bit of heat if it really isn't coming off for you. Get a, get a wrench on there and a pipe. And uh, that's how you gotta do it until it comes loose. A couple other things I forgot to mention, that's a 19 millimeter socket. And another thing, see I got a C-clamp here and I got a C-clamp on the other side. You might want to do that so when you take out the last bolt, the bumper doesn't fall, fall out on top of you when, you when you pull out the last bolt. And uh, along with that, when the bumper falls off on top of you, make sure it doesn't take the, uh, the license plate lights with it because you'll pull them out. I was trying to figure out how to take these clips off, but it's just, you just rotate it, quarter turn, and pull it out. That's all there is to it. Okay, sometimes you got to figure it out as you go. The, ah, the nut in the back, ah, too dark. The, the rear nut, or the one more towards the front of the vehicle, that nut was welded on the frame. But the nut closer towards the bumper, that is not welded. I was spinning it and spinning it, wondering, man, is this bolt going to come out yet? And look at it, and the nut's spinning around, so you got to put a wrench on it. Well, that last bolt wasn't come out, so uh took the gas axe to that one. Not a big deal. Just make sure to have all these sheet metal pieces to, to make a shield so you don't set anything on fire. There's the bumper off, so now let's get the hitch on there. All right, I got the, the hitch in with just with the first two um, bolts that come with the come with the hitch, and you see I very loosely screwed them in there. That's so you have plenty of plenty of play, so you can align the rest of the holes because nothing ever lines up quite right. So only tighten the bolts down when you're when you got all your bolts in. So I'm going to put the factory bolts back in back there and there and I'm going to use my uh, new bolts that I just bought to go in there and here because I cut that one off the torch and I might as well use new hardware since I already bought it. If and when you do decide to use the factory hardware it would pay off to take a triangle file and clean up the threads or if you have a uh, a die for whatever this thread is. If you have a metric tap, tap and die set, run it down there. But uh, I just have triangle files. I don't have any metric stuff, so let's clean these threads up so they're not as tough to put back in as they were to take out. Well, and here's the uh, the new half-inch bolt that I'm putting in there, grade 8. Put a lock washer on there. I'm not much of a fan of lock washers, but I figured I'd put one on there just for fun. And, uh, of course, I put some anti-seize on there, too. Love any sees it. It definitely helps if you ever want to take something apart. You don't have to use a torch. Well, I've got all the bolts in, not tight, but um, uh, four out of six of them are, are cinched. And I just figured I'd make a comment on the uh, fit and finish of this hitch once again. Like I said, the, the welds are nice and everything. It looks nice. 
Oh, actually, I'm, I wasn't even going to say this. I didn't even notice this until now, but just dragging this around the shop and messing with it, I wore the paint right off. So that's too bad. But uh, anyway, the bigger deal, let's see if I can get my flashlight. Show you a little... Hmm. See how it's not quite square there? Not quite square there. When I had all the boots bolts in loosely, I tried jiggling it and it really didn't want to jiggle. So I figured, all right, that's where it wants to be. See this side and this side's a lot better. So, uh, that's too bad. I guess, you know, cinching the bolts up will straighten everything out. But uh, I think this hitch retails on, her, on Kurt's website for 250 bucks or so. So for $250, I would expect something a little more square. And I know things warp when you weld them and everything, but still, this is, it's, a, it's a brand name hitch. Hmm. Now it's time to cinch up these bolts nice and tight now. And you see I have my socket wrench and my favorite wrench addition. My German viewers may be familiar with it, the Guten Tight wrench. And uh, is there a torque spec for these bolts? Probably, but do I know them? No. So let's get a Guten Tight. This one inch piece of iron tube, iron pipe, is one of the handiest tools in my shop, aside from a flat bladed screwdriver. I was putting one of the last bolts there, the factory ones, and it decided to take some of the threads with it. See, there's some of the threads from the nut. So, those threads are no good anymore, so I gotta drill them out and put one of my uh, half inch bolts in there. Good thing I bought them. But of course, Spare tire was in the way, so I got rid of that. Now I'm going to come in from the inside here and drill that hole out with that, with my drill there. Well, guys, if uh, any of you read reviews of this hitch telling you that it's a two-hour job, they're full of shit. I've, I don't know what time it is now, but it's definitely past two hours. I started at four. It's starting to get dark now. But it's always a fabrication project. Now, this bumper... Here's the bumper mount and the bumper itself. You got to put a spacer between it because the hitch goes on the outside of the frame and it widens, widens the distance between one of those rails and the other. And my other attentive viewers will realize that me and my haste to get this on screw up. So I got to redo and un redo my work here. I got to take out those two bolts in the side of the frame because I have to put the stupid bumper back on. So I have to undo a lot of work I did, but at least these two carriage bolts there will keep the hitch on, keep everything aligned, hopefully. Huh, all right, there it is, it's loosely in place. It is uh, about eight o'clock, I started around 4.30, so it's three and a half hours so far. And uh, it's been a long three and a half hours. Oh! I remember I finally put the put the bumper on the way I should have. And uh So I just need to tighten those bolts. That one's already tight. I need to plug these lights back in. And uh Oh, that must have broken off. I had some reverse lights on there, but I must have broken that off when I've been throwing this bumper around. Oh, what can you do? So anyway, uh, I really think that's about it. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. You've already seen, pretty much seen the, the final result, and you've seen all the mistakes you can make, and I've made them for you, so you don't have to. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up. Uh, hit the subscribe button or the like button, leave a comment. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hope this video has either helped you install your hitch or given you a laugh or 
you can laugh at all my mistakes or something, I don't know. Alright, so I gotta tighten these bolts up, I'm gonna go inside and have some dinner. Thanks for watching, guys. Well, I guess I'm back with a couple couple thoughts here, a couple final su summary comments. Firstly, don't trust that uh, factory hardware. Go get yourself some grade 8 bolts and make sure you have a drill with a half inch chuck and a half inch drill bit and drill those holes out if you need to. I ended up drilling out both holes even though just that hole stripped. I, I uh, drilled out both of the rearward holes or the holes closer towards the front of the truck because the other one felt a little squishy and I said, you know what, I'll just drill it out now. So that's what I did. So luckily I bought those four bolts. They were an uh, inch and a half long, half inch coarse thread, grade eight. And I used a lock washer and a flat washer on each. Don't forget to put the bumper on or else you know, you're going to cause yourself more trouble. And uh, let's see, I'm looking right now. I forgot to put the uh, the um, lights back in. So I'll show you. This is the uh, the marker light, or it's not the marker light, but anyway, you put it in like so and you just rotate it and it's locked in there. And that's the, uh, the license plate illuminator lamp. But uh, yeah, make sure to get some grade 8 hardware and uh, you might need to use an oxyacetylene torch, so hopefully you have one of those. Um, this one doesn't want to go in. And let's see. I guess that's about it. You know, test fit everything before you. There we go. You put it in and turn it the other way. Test fit everything and loosely bolt in everything before you bolt it down tight. And stop and think a minute. Just in case you forgot something. Like a bumper. Anti seize everything. Get it nice and tight. And uh, we're all set. Got the spare tire back on, winch that back up, and uh, we're ready to we're ready to pull some trailers. All right, once again, guys, thanks for watching. I'm gonna go get some dinner.